Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Vicarage Garden for, uh, well, for the first time for quite a long time. Uh, the weather is beautiful and we are expecting quite high temperatures today. So uh, I thought I'd come out, listen to the bird song. I will probably eat my breakfast and have my first cup of tea out here later on as well. Uh, but before we do that, let's just take a moment's quiet as we come into God's presence. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time, you have made us in your image. And in these last days you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your Spirit ever renew our lives and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so the night has passed and the day lies open before us. So now let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you. Amen. It's difficult saying no sometimes, isn't it? In our heart, we know it's the right thing to do, but we don't want to disappoint people. So we go along and sometimes regret it later. It's okay to tell people no. Nehemiah was a busy man and someone asked for a meeting that would take him away from his work. He replied, can't you see I'm busy? Let's put that into a little bit of context in Nehemiah 6, 1 to 4. When word came to Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem the Arab and the rest of our enemies that I had rebuilt the wall and not a gap was left in it, though up to that time I had not set the doors in the gates, Sanballat and Geshem sent me this message. Come, let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. But they were scheming to harm me, so I sent messengers to them with this reply. I am carrying on a great project and cannot go down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and go down to you? Four times they sent me the same message and each time I gave them the same answer. Can you not see that I am busy? We're on a good old ferret around the Old Testament this week. Ezekiel, uh, we're looking at Judges on Sunday. Today, Nehemiah. And if you've not read any of these books, then I urge you to have a go. And I've thrown to that mix the book of Daniel as well, which we've been looking at uh, in our Ignite sessions during July. They're not always the easiest to understand, but they tell us a huge amount about the chosen people of Israel, the mistakes that they made, and the patience that God showed them. But we also see some of the main players who walk closely with God, even when others around them had gone off in their own direction. There's a huge amount to be taken from these stories. That rings resonance in our lives today. But in our story today, the Jews uh, had returned from exile in Babylon. Nehemiah was tasked to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. He had a lot of pressure and trouble rebuilding the wall and he got halfway done and ran out of materials. 
there was only rubble to rebuild with. But through perseverance and God's will, he eventually managed to build the walls. But alongside all of that, there was also organising all the tribes, getting them on the same page and agreeing with each other. And so the last thing that he needed was the distraction of his enemies. His doubters wanted him to stop the work on the wall and have a meeting with them. And Nehemiah's response, can't you see I'm busy doing the Lord's work? We can learn a lot from Nehemiah. Too many times we let little distractions take us away from what the Lord is doing. People we hope will respect us will often drag us away from what's most important. The key is to remain focused on where God has put us and have the courage to be able to tell people we are busy. Because if we don't, we'll end up frustrated. And I think that's where the gift of discernment is important. We need to be able to use wisdom and weed out what isn't essential. What may seem necessary for other people ends up being the wrong choice for us. Leaning on the Lord and putting our trust in him will help us to push forward and endure, endure all of those who are against us. It's also easy, I think, and maybe this is just me, but to see the next bright, shiny thing and think, well, maybe we should be doing that. Or behaving like that church over there or doing what so-and-so down the road is doing. But that isn't what God has called me to. And we need to trust that the place that God has placed as in is exactly the right place we're supposed to be and then there's the other thing the other trap i suppose that churches fall into as well and something i often frustrate my team with at st anne's we see something legitimate that we think would be good to do maybe even god is saying we should pay attention and that's great. And if we do pay attention and we get on and do it, that's wonderful because we're following God's plan. But I think sometimes what we then fail to do is look at what we're already doing and decide what it is that we need to stop doing if we're going to do this new thing. See, if we don't ask that question, that's when we end up spreading ourselves too thin and what was a good idea, what was a God idea, just becomes another yoke around our necks. It's really important to always ask the question, if I do that, what do I stop? And often, how can I work differently? So this morning I want to encourage you to keep going don't get distracted even when it's tough and we feel like we're plodding along when we don't seem to be making any headway at all don't be distracted by the thing that looks easier or quicker to get to or maybe even will bring greater reward for you god has placed on your heart that goal that thing you've been working towards let me encourage you to stick to it and don't get distracted and when someone asks you for something else, have the confidence to say, can't you see that I'm busy with the Lord's work? Amen. So as we finish this morning, I'm going to finish with the prayer of the day from the Church of England, as I always do. And then you might wish to join me in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Help us to remain true in the place that you have put us. 
to aim for the goal that you have shown us. We ask for your strength through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. On Sunday, we'll be having our watch party at half past ten. Do join us for that here on Facebook and it will also be available on YouTube. At half past nine, we've got our first uh, socially distanced communion at St Anne's, that's at 9.30. Uh, if you'd like to join us, then please do come along to that. And I just encourage you to have a great weekend. Enjoy the sunshine, which we're expecting this weekend. And I hope uh, you have a good week, a good weekend with your families. But for now, the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And just to say that from next week, we'll be doing morning prayers Tuesdays and Thursdays, just during August, and then we'll get back to a daily pattern in September.